Today on Final Drive, we got it, boys. The Honda Civic Type R. Let's get it. At last, the Honda Civic Type R has finally touched down on American soil after 20 years of being forbidden fruit. Assembled in Swindon, England, Honda has taken the 10th generation Honda Civic hatchback and given it the Type R treatment with its iconic red badging and championship white paint that pays homage to Honda's first winning F1 car. Let's get this out of the way right now. This Type R looks atrocious. The styling is way over the top with its boy racer appearance. What makes this troublesome is that it was priced new between 34 to 36 grand, which means the audience that can actually afford this car is much older than its grade school looks and would probably prefer something a lot less flamboyant. One of the things that made the previous Type R so appealing was their understated appearance. Now, not so much. The FK8 has a front engine, front wheel drive layout, powered by a turbocharged, two liter, four cylinder, dual overhead cam, intelligent variable valve timing and lift electronic control engine, producing a whopping 306 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque at 6,500 RPM with a track top speed of 170 miles per hour, making this the most powerful Honda production vehicle in America. Equally impressive is the excellent short throw, close ratio, six speed manual transmission with a helical limited slip differential, so no more one wheel burnouts. Taming all this power is a pair of red Brembo four piston aluminum brake calipers coupled with 13.8 inch cross drilled and ventilated brake rotors up front and solid 12 inch disc brakes out back. But why are the rear calipers only partially painted red? This is a $34,000 car and Honda couldn't be bothered with a little extra paint? The Type R rides on massive 20 by eight and a half inch gloss black 10 spoke aluminum alloy wheels with red striping, a red Honda badge for the center cap and scantily visible 24530ZR20 max performance summer tires, so potholes are going to be a problem. Fuel efficiency is 22 city, 28 highway, and 25 miles per gallon combined with a capless fuel filler. At the front, the Type R has a love-hate relationship. On one hand, I love the full LED headlights and fog lights, the multiple air ducts and bumper cover inlets for better aerodynamics and brake cooling, and most of all, no massive center grille despite having a front mount intercooler. On the other hand, I hate the two humongous fake vents that remain non-functional, except for this rectangular cutout on the passenger side so the sound of the horn isn't obstructed. Come on, Honda. You'd rather cut out an arbitrary shape than use what the mesh grille was designed for? Furthermore, I'm not loving the fake carbon fiber lip chrome headlight housing instead of gun metal, and the garbage, garbage Honda wing grille. Moving to the hood, the Type R shaves off 11.7 pounds of body weight using aluminum instead of steel for its construction while incorporating a dubious center air scoop that Honda says helps cool the engine compartment. However, upon closer inspection, you can see the air enters the hood scoop, travels along these air tunnels, and exits through the fender flares. Does the hood scoop really cool the engine bay? Or is this clever marketing? You be the judge. The Type R's profile features a color matched shark fin satellite radio antenna, orange turn signals in the fenders, which is a car sin, Shame. fake vents at the bottom of the Shame. fender flares, fake Shame. carbon fiber side splitters, Shame. and side view mirrors that do not power fold or have LED turn signal indicators. Come on, Honda, this is a $34,000 car. At the rear, 
The roofline has four vortex generators sandwiched in between two buttresses that direct airflow over the big wing for added downforce and aerodynamics. In fact, the Type R has two rear spoilers. The first is rather obvious due to its ginormous size and gloss black center section, but the second is a lot more discreet sitting at the tail end of the hatch glass. Why two wings? Two is better than one, I guess. The taillights are full LED with the Civic's signature light pipe design, more fake vents similar to the front with non-functional parking sensors, and a fake carbon fiber rear lip spoiler and diffuser. However, the icing on the cake is that garbage, garbage. three outlet exhaust. This should have been a two muffler setup with all the exhaust tips having the same diameter. And if you thought three mufflers meant three times the awesomeness, then you're about to be disappointed. Moving to the interior, the cabin is brimming with Type R goodness amidst a plethora of red accents, faux carbon fiber, contrast stitching, and a suede-like Alcantara material that gives you the impression you're driving something truly special. It has a leather-wrapped, red and black, three-spoke steering wheel with a red Honda badge in the center, thumb grips, red stitching, flat bottom for easy ingress and egress, tilt telescopic adjustability, and some of the worst feeling buttons of any modern car. Similar to the Civic Sport we reviewed last year, these buttons don't look or feel any better. With a $34,000 price tag, how's that for ASMR? The Type R's instrument cluster shares the same convoluted setup like the rest of the Civic lineup, segregating the engine temperature on the left, fuel meter on the right, and an all-digital 7-inch driver information display in the center. That's pretty awesome. Here, you can select from a variety of real-time metrics such as throttle and brake application, turbocharger boost, shift lights, G-meter, and lap times. Also, I love the digital tachometer and user-selectable rev match feature that blips the throttle on downshifts if you're no heel-toe master. There is a 7-inch touchscreen audio display with an AM, FM, HD, and Sirius XM satellite radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, dual-zone automatic climate control, push-button start, Type R serial number plate, sport pedals, a multi-angle backup camera with dynamic guidelines for top, normal, and wide views, and a 1.5 amp USB port alongside a 12 volt DC power outlet up front and a one amp USB port below the sliding center armrest. However, the absence of a physical adjustment knob for the radio makes tuning the volume a pain in the biscuit. The Type R has an electronic parking brake, which is good news if you enjoy conveniences such as brake hold and hill start assist, but bad news if you enjoy the occasional handbrake turn. Also, it has a circular shift knob made from solid aluminum instead of the traditional teardrop shape made from titanium. However, be it aluminum or titanium, a metal shift knob means only one thing. It'll be hotter than Hades after a few minutes in the sun. Up front, the Type R comes equipped with a pair of race-inspired sport seats. They have a two-tone red and black color scheme covered in that same suede effect fabric that is breathable as well as comfortable. There is red and white contrast stitching, aggressive hip and midsection bolsters, and the Type R logo stitched at the top in case you forget what you're driving. Also, it has two shoulder pass-throughs for a racing harness that exits to a full carbon fiber seat back imitating the carbon Kevlar race look. The seat controls are manual adjustable, including driver's side height adjustment, but no lumbar support on either side. Out back, the Type R has a more subdued appearance, dressed in black cloth with red contrast stitching, and of course, red seat belts like the front. It has 35.9 inches of rear leg room with a 60-40 split folding seat back. There are four cup holders, two in the front center console, two in the rear, and one bottle holder in each door. 
Rear visibility is okay, as the non-removable headrests, third brake light, and smaller spoiler obstruct your view. That's right, it's the smaller wing that inhibits your vision. So even though you can see the big wang in this photo, it is not visible when driving, thanks to the clever convex design of its center section. Good thinking, Honda. The trunk has 25.7 cubic feet of cargo space with the seats up and 46.2 with the seats down. Also, it has a side-mounted retractable tonneau cover to conceal your belongings along with a tire repair kit and air pump. When it comes to safety, the Type R comes equipped with a variety of active, passive, and driver-assistive safety features looking out for you. Driving the R is exactly what you would expect. Outstanding. Outstanding. Now the first thing that you notice are the racing seats, but don't let their appearance fool you because these seats are extremely comfortable even with their high hip and midsection bolsters that keep you in place so you're not slipping and sliding around in the corners. But if you're a little on the fat side, you may want to try before you buy. Also, I'm disappointed that Honda didn't go with Recaro's like they have in past iterations of the R, but they did do a great job of balancing cost, comfort, and performance. Now, Type R suspension consists of a dual axis strut front and a multi-link rear out back. Now, what makes this amazing is that Honda has virtually eliminated torque steer, even though this is a front wheel drive transmission. And what torque steer is, is basically when you're taking off from a stop in gear, the car would violently want to turn direction, shift to the left or to the right. But virtually, you could take your hand off and shift, and the car is still going in the same direction. It's pretty amazing. When it comes to power, the Type R has more than enough. With 306 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, this is no ordinary Civic, as if the red seats and big wing didn't give it away. However, the power to sound ratio is quite perplexing. You would think with that much horsepower, as well as three ridiculous mufflers, that you'd be just waking up your neighbors at night when you're coming home, but you don't. It's quite subtle and refined, which is quite out of character when you look at how extravagant and ridiculous this car looks. I mean, yes, it's a bit fast and furious, but it sure doesn't sound that way. One of the things I love most about the Type R is the six-speed manual transmission. Now, unlike other manual transmissions, you're never left guessing, what gear am I in? Honda engineered the shifts to be smooth with just the right amount of notchiness, so you're never left guessing. It gives off both an audible as well as tactile feel. It's kind of like a mechanical keyboard. The way those mechanical keys feel when you press each keystroke down compared to a regular keyboard or butterfly keyboard, it's that same kind of feeling. So if you like that, you're gonna love this transmission. Speaking of the transmission, the Type R has three different drive modes, Comfort, Sport, and Plus R, with Sport being the default setting. Now the difference in these driving personas comes down to steering feel, throttle response, and suspension firmness. And let me tell you, the biggest difference I noticed was steering firmness between Comfort and Plus R. It's almost like you don't have power steering at all. It's that much of a struggle to turn, but at the same time, it means it's that much more engaging. So for all you performance enthusiasts, you're gonna love that. And of course, the tighter suspension and faster throttle response is excellent and is definitely what you want if you've got any kind of access to canyon roads or back roads where you could definitely take the Type R through its paces and all the twisties with the racing seats keeping you firmly in place. So there you have it, the 2018 Honda Civic Type R. The fastest, most powerful Honda Civic this side of the pond with dubious styling and hatchback versatility worthy of its racing moniker. However, I do miss the naturally aspirated screaming VTEC engines of old with their eight to 9,000 red lines that made Honda famous. But in order to compete with the Focus RSs, Subaru STIs, Lancer Evolutions, and Golf Rs of the world, don't forget the Veloster N. <laughs> Honda needed a quick answer to big horsepower, so forced induction 
was the solution. Also, kudos to Honda for attempting to address many of our concerns for 2020 by removing the fake mesh from the front bumper cover cutouts, minimizing the Honda wing grill, adding a volume knob to the infotainment system, and so much more. So what do you think of the 2018 Honda Civic Type R? Love it? Hate it? Own it? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for Final Drive. Thank you for watching. And special thanks to Jactimus Prime for supporting us on Subscribestar. And if you would like to power up your support, consider joining us on Subscribestar for exclusive Final Drive content in addition to our merch store for all your Final Drive swag. All links are in the description below. Thanks to all your amazing support, we recently reached 300 subscribers. So to celebrate, this is for you. We're giving away this awesome Final Drive prize pack. It includes one Final Drive key tag, two FD sticker slaps, two unreleased Final Drive logo stickers, and an exclusive 300 hologram sticker to commemorate this milestone. Most impressive. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment on this video with the hashtag final drive so we know who is entering the giveaway and you're all set. One lucky winner will be randomly selected and announced in an upcoming video. All giveaway details are in the description box below. Thanks for being the best subscribers on YouTube and good luck. So don't forget to smash that like button Subscribe if you're new, and remember, you can't spell famous without A-M-O-S. Peace out. Sure, you could solve this in the aftermarket, but out of all the places for Honda to pull in restraint, what's the sound? You gotta be kidding me.